<laughs> Last night, as Senator Clinton was celebrating her win in Pennsylvania, the New York Times editorial board, which endorsed her bid for the Democratic nomination before the New York primary, publishing a, a new editorial that could be filed under the category of buyer's remorse. The title, The Low Road to Victory. The board criticizing Senator Clinton for running a nasty campaign. Quote, the Pennsylvania campaign, which produced yet another inconclusive result on Tuesday, was even meaner, more vacuous, more desperate, and more filled with pandering than the mean, vacuous, desperate, pander-filled contests that preceded it. Voters are getting tired of it. It is demeaning the political process. And it does not work. It is past time for Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton to acknowledge that the negativity for which she is mostly responsible does nothing but harm to her, her opponent, her party, and the 2008 election. The word inconclusive there, literally true, probably not practically so, but the Times pointing to the final TV ad Senator Clinton ran in the Keystone State on Monday as evidence. On the eve of this crucial primary, Mrs. Clinton became the first Democratic candidate to wave the bloody shirt of 9-11. A Clinton television ad torn right from Karl Rove's playbook evoked the 1929 stock market crash, Pearl Harbor, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Cold War, and the 9-11 attacks, complete with video of Osama bin Laden. Left out everything but the disappearance of Judge Crater. Let's turn to our own Howard Feynman, senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Good to see you here, sir. Thank you. Uh, the Times editorial board claimed negative campaigning does not work. Uh, it, it clearly worked, didn't it? I mean, she won. But what, what's the end game after it working, and where else does it work? Yeah, I don't think they were in Pennsylvania when they wrote that yeah. editorial. It, was, it came out about 8 o'clock Because it did work, night. and a lot of the late deciders went for Clinton, partly on the strength of those negative uh, mm -hmm. ads and attacks that Clinton... Uh, carried out, and she's going to continue doing that. You talk about the end game through the rest of the primaries. Hillary Clinton has nothing to lose. She has a negative rating that's about 50 percent. She wants to win on any terms she can win on, and she's going to keep on keeping on. And if you think you've seen mean and vacuous so far, yeah. you ain't seen nothing yet. But but it seems to me that there is something to lose here apart from the election, which is another issue yes. altogether. Right. But even if you separate that out, don't you have to worry about at this stage, or we've been extended, we actually got a, a reprieve from the governor for two weeks. Right. After last night, nobody's going to do anything. We're going to see how these next two votes take place. But if she doesn't deliver in the way that she thinks she can on May 6th, are we now talking about retribution or the threat of retribution to get her out of the race? Is the, are we now, is it as bloody back as it is emanating from her campaign? Oh, I, I think there's been talk of retribution. I know there's been talk mm -hmm. of retribution for weeks. Well, that's only beginning behind the scenes. And that's what Democratic leaders, if that isn't a complete oxymoron, yeah. is, is all about. That's what they're worried about. What this is going to require at some point, all of Chuck's excellent numbers aside, or some adults somewhere in the Democratic Party to step in and stop this thing like a referee mm -hmm. in a fight that could go on for 30 rounds. That's what's going on. Those are the super, super, super delegates who are going to have to really decide this. Right. The one who, or somebody who can take her into a room and only he comes out. Yes. That kind of equation. Yes, exactly. More voters may have thought Senator Clinton went too far with her attacks, according to the exit polls. 67 percent, but half of them believe the same of Senator Obama. Does Obama fight back? How does he do it? Uh, can he run an aggressive campaign without being seen as, as rising to the bait? And does he maintain the step down for Clinton supporters that she doesn't care about in terms of Obama supporters? Mm. Well, I, I think they've been trying to do it both ways in the Obama campaign. They, yeah. they, they, they went on the attack to some extent. They didn't go full bore. There's been a debate within their camp as to how to proceed. I think the, the calmer heads are, are trying to prevail and say, look, we're ahead mm -hmm. in delegates. We're ahead in money. We're ahead in votes. Let's be careful and not give away the one thing that we have that makes us unique. And they're going to try to ease over the finish line that way rather than become open to the charge that they're just another campaign and he is just another politician. It's tricky, but they're trying to calculate how to just get over the finish line without losing all their dignity. A it's difficult yeah, politics. Well, yeah, boy, oh boy. And also, a last point about electability, which I just don't understand. I don't know this well enough to understand why this has not been raised by the Obama campaign. No matter who won them, each primary and each caucus during this, from the poll numbers at the, wherever you want to start the starting line, more than like three days before, his numbers, I did this last night on the air, his numbers go up as time goes by, 
whether he wins or not, and her numbers, as time goes by, go down. And there may be a little bump back, as there was in New Hampshire and there was in Pennsylvania, obviously. But, the, but is that not the ultimate measure of electability if, as time goes by, you gain voters as opposed to losing well, them? Well, yes, but the question is, how much time do you have? The election's in November. Right. And what's happened with Hillary's vote, it's become concentrated. Yes, she, she doesn't expand her base, but she builds up the base that she has. To have won Catholic voters in Pennsylvania by a two-to-one margin, is not so much a victory for her mm -hmm. as it is a warning sign for him. He's still got various constituencies to reach. The question is whether, if he's the nominee, mm -hmm. he'll have the time to do it. That's what he's going to have to do between now and the fall. Whether he can do that and also confront John McCain at the same time is the question Hillary's saying he can't answer. We'll see, because evidently we're going into over, 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 over time. At least. Howard Feynman of MSNBC and Newsweek, uh, also author of the 13 American Arguments. Happy anniversary on that first debate on Saturday. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Thank you.